What's the plan? So today we're going to Akihabara, which means game hunting and lots of it. Hey guys, Metal Jesus here, and today I am back in Japan. This is part three of my trip to Japan, and today we are going to be going to Tokyo. So far in this trip, we have met up with Kinsey and Tony, who live in Kyoto, and we did a bunch of touristy stuff in that city. It was really great seeing those monkeys. After that, we traveled to Osaka, where we visited the Super Nintendo World, as well as the official Nintendo store, and a lot more. But now we're on a train to the world's largest city, Tokyo. In this video, we're going to go up to Shibuya Sky and take in the entirety of the city. We're also going to do some video game hunting in Akihabara. We're going to take a day trip to Yokohama and visit the Ramen Museum, as well as check out the Gundam Factory. That's where you get to visit and see that life-size, massive Gundam robot. And because it's Japan, we're going to have some incredibly tasty food. Let's take a look. We arrived in Tokyo and we're going to check into our Airbnb, which is on a quiet side street. So that's going to be kind of cool because we're not going to have to deal with too much noise, but it is really close to the Shinjuku area. So while, yes, we're a little bit off the beaten path, we're in a great neighborhood. Our Airbnb is kind of narrow, but it has everything we need. Basically, two bedrooms are on either side of the unit. And then in the center, you've got a kitchen and eating area as well as a bathroom. There isn't a living room like the last place though, which isn't really ideal for when you want to hang out. But like so many of these Japanese Airbnbs, they can be kind of small and weirdly laid out. Now, admittedly, that's not a big deal because we really only plan on sleeping here anyways, but I do want to mention it if you plan on booking these. Again, you've got to be very careful when you look at those photos. We quickly get settled in and then we want to step out into the city to explore it. And one of the first stops as we step out of Shinjuku Station, we kind of stumble on to that famous 3D billboard. I'm sure you're like me where you've seen this on social media many times before, but I got to tell you seeing it in person is pretty neat. I mean, basically it's kind of an optical illusion depending on where you're, where you're standing, but because it's so big and because it's so high up, the effect is very cool and it's a very effective billboard because basically it goes back and forth between an ad and a 3d animation and the street is just filled with people standing there watching it for long periods of time like we were and then it's a quick walk over to omoide yokocho this is a pretty funky and touristy part of tokyo where you can grab some drinks and also i guess see people filming television shows or maybe a movie once we grabbed a drink and we did a little bit of people watching oh this night has only just begun it's about a 15 minute walk over to the golden guy district basically a nightlife area a place for drinking and down one of these side alleys is a tiny heavy metal bar called deathmatch in hell now this place is wild because it only seats five people and then the rest is standing room only and you basically have to stand in line to get in this place and it's super hard you gotta line up early but if you're into metal <laughs> and you want an experience you have to try this place out i'm not entirely sure how much i can show of this footage because not all of it would exactly be family friendly but in the background they're playing all these cheesy horror films like the toxic avenger evil dead and a lot more and the music that they're playing in here is like the real deal man i mean they are cranking cattle decapitation they are cranking some sepultura some old school dream theater they just mixed it all up and every single drink in here is only 666 yen or about four dollars and fifty cents and they never ever charge a cover 
This is a super cool bar, man. It was really fun, it was crazy, it was loud. Everyone was having a great time. If you can get in and you like metal, you definitely have to check it out. The next day I got up a little bit early because I wanted to explore the park that's pretty much just across the street from the Airbnb. This is not really on the agenda, but I was curious to check this place out. And I gotta tell you, it really surprised me. This is a park in the middle of Tokyo, kind of where we're staying, and it's pretty big, but check this out. There are like little turtles floating in this water here. I thought this was like kind of random and also very cute. It was really fun to kind of stop and just watch them. A little bit further around the corner, there are a bunch of statues and art installations that are dotted along the path. And then if you continue following that path, it kind of goes around to the other side of where those turtles were. And then you can see it's this really beautiful waterfall. And so you can see this is a really nice park and a great way to start my morning, getting some coffee and just kind of easing into the day a little bit. Thankfully, we've been here long enough so that jet lag isn't really an issue. I mean, I'm a little bit out of time, but we've been here long enough where it's, it's not really bothering me anymore. So we're going to the Tokyo Metropolitan Government Building, which does not sound like fun. But if you want a good view of the city on the 49th floor, I think, uh, it has a free observation deck. So definitely check it out. Like Kinsey said, we're gonna be checking out this government building. And when she first suggested this, I was like, okay, I mean, that does sound kind of lame, but free is free, which is really good. And we go up there and you can see the, the views are extremely good up here. This is actually a pretty cool space. What's nice about this is that it's air conditioned. So we're gonna go up in the Shibuya sky in a little bit later, but this is a great opportunity for people who, again, are looking for something free and you're inside so you're not burning up. For lunch, Kinsey wanted to check out this place called Egg Slut. Now, <laughs> A name like that, I'm like, okay, this could turn out to be anything. But I guess this is actually a pretty famous American restaurant that's from LA that has been opening up locations all around the world. And they just opened up a Japanese version of it. So uh, we had to check it out and I am extremely glad that we did. I have never heard of this place before, but I gotta tell you, man, it was incredible. This is some of the best food that we had on the entire trip especially for morning like breakfast food. This was amazing. I don't know if there is an egg slut near you. I wish there was one in Seattle because I think it would do it extremely well. But like I said, I guess they're worldwide. If you run into one, do not skip it. All right, we are awake. We have caffeine. We've got food in our bellies and it's time to go up to the Shibuya Sky Tower. Now, the difference between this place and the, the government building is that obviously the government building is free. This one costs around 15 US dollars to go all the way up. It's about the same amount as if you were to go to the Seattle Space Needle. <laughs> but the difference here is, and you can see it from this footage, you are really on top of the world. You are above most of the buildings in Tokyo. Not all of them, but most of them. And the views are absolutely insane. Tokyo is technically the largest city in the world and has over 14 million people living here. And up here, it's just amazing how it literally goes off in every single direction. The size is absolutely immense. It's fun to stand up here too because you can, you know, zoom out and just try to take it all in. But then you can also, you know, I was using a, a camera here and then you can zoom in way down on the street to kind of get the sense of scale and distance. It was wild. It was also extremely hot on this day. And as you can see, especially at the top, there's not a lot of shade. And as you would expect, it can be kind of windy. And so they don't allow anyone to wear hats up here because they obviously don't want it flying off your head. But yeah, just an amazing view, an amazing experience. If you go to Tokyo and you really like these kind of views, it's worth the 20 bucks. So today we're going to Yokohama, which I'm really excited about because I've never been there and I played Yakuza like a dragon, so I have to go. And so today we're definitely hitting up the Ramen Museum, Chinatown, the Big Gundam, all the hotspots. 
All right, we are on a 45 minute train to the city of Yokohama. Now, when I first got to Japan, Kinsey asked me, okay, what kind of food do you wanna have while you're here? And the answer for me is fairly easy. I mean, I wanted to try a little bit of everything, but really ramen is where it's at in Japan. They take it to the next level. And I had heard that they actually have a couple ramen museums. She recommended that we check out the one in Yokohama. And so that's the first stop. Ramen is so important to the Japanese culture and they have just a long history of it. So it was really cool checking out the, the upper level here where I discovered that they have way more flavors than I ever knew. We got Kyoto ramen. Mm. Yes, it tells you noodle thickness, broth thickness, and then what kind of base of the broth. You learn about the history of ramen here, but you can also go into the gift shop and get some souvenirs and also buy a bunch of these varieties for yourself. Which one's your favorite? All of them. I love ramen. And once you're done there, you can go downstairs and there is a recreation of a classic Japanese street with a bunch of traditional ramen restaurants to try out. Now, I will say that the lines here can be pretty long, which to be quite honest, is kind of on par with going to a lot of actual ramen places just on the street. But just be aware that this is a very popular museum. And so if you come here, you might want to come during the week or maybe, you know, some of the off hours, just so you don't have to wait quite as long or you can get into the restaurant that you want to try. We did end up going into one of those restaurants that didn't have too long of a line and we had an amazing lunch there. It was extremely tasty. While we're here in Yokohama, we wanted to check out a local Surigaya store. And I gotta tell you guys, this was the best one yet. This place was absolutely massive and it didn't feel picked over. That's the thing you have to worry about when you come to Japan and you only stick to the touristy areas and you're trying to find video games is that, you know, they are often picked over because a lot of other tourists are also buying video games or they're overpriced. And so it is worth it if you can taking some of these day trips outside of the major areas because you'll you'll just have a better experience when you're trying to find games. And so for this place, I actually had to slow down a little bit because I could have blown all my money in this one store. I kept going around a corner and just finding more and more amazing stuff. It was like, oh man, I mean, gold mine. Which reminds me, if you wanna see all the games I picked up during my entire Japan trip, you're gonna to wanna to be subscribed to my channel because the fourth video that comes after this one is gonna be an entire pickups video. All Japanese pickups, that's what's gonna be in that video. So make sure you're subscribed. And speaking of video games, this is a good time to mention the sponsor of this Japan video. That is Cygnus Entertainment created by the original founders of Sierra Online, Ken and Roberta Williams. They released the Colossal Cave 3D remake about a year ago, and while they are excited to bring the classic text adventure to a whole new audience, they did receive a bit of criticism and feedback from players and reviewers like me. Instead of abandoning the game, however, they took the feedback and worked for the past nine months enhancing the game for a brand new version 2.0. The game's visuals have been greatly enhanced with better textures, there's also real-time lighting and shadows, as well as better animations to the characters. They've also updated the audio, they've added new tips within the game, there's a brand new autosave feature, as well as more map options, and they snuck in some easter eggs and a ton more. Back when I originally reviewed it, you could tell that a lot of passion and pride went into their version of Colossal Cave 3D, but they weren't just satisfied leaving the game as is. They wanted to take the feedback and make the fans of the original game proud. So if you haven't played the game yet, or maybe you played it originally and thought a bit more work could have gone into it, well, now is the time to check out the brand new 2.0 version. I'll put a link in the video description below, and I want to thank Cygnus Entertainment and Ken and Roberta for sponsoring this video. Look how cute. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> After that, Kinsey wanted to go down to the waterfront park, and I guess this is featured in Yakuza Like a Dragon. She was pretty funny because she was like, oh yeah, I remember what's over there because she played the game, right? She's like, 
oh yeah, I, re I remember that over there in the game and over here there'd be like a stand where a guy would sell you some stuff, maybe some healing potions or whatever. It was pretty funny. And then very close to that park is the Robot Factory. So this is world famous. And basically what it is, it's part a museum and then also a performance piece. In the museum section of it, they actually have these robotic arms that assemble a smaller version of the Gundam. And I gotta tell you, this was really impressive because it's incredibly detailed and precise. It's amazing how far robotics have come because you see here, again, these are small little pieces and these robot arms are assembling it. It was actually pretty cool to watch. And then outside they have this big ass life-size Gundam mech. And essentially what it does is he moves and they play this little kind of 10 minute skit it was all in Japanese and I have no idea what it was necessarily about, but essentially you stand there and you watch it kind of move and stuff. It was, it was cool. It was also incredibly kind of chill. I wouldn't necessarily say that this is a must see unless you are just a massive Gundam fan, then obviously this is the place for you. But for me, it was a little underwhelming, just a, just a little bit. What's the plan? So today we're going to Akihabara, which means game hunting and lots of it. Yay! <laughs> it is a new day back in Tokyo and today is going to be all about game hunting. I'm so excited. We're in Japan. We're in Tokyo. We're going to go to Akihabara, which is a part of Tokyo that is all about the tech and the video games and the anime and the manga. Yeah, I I'm pumped. One of our first stops is Super Potato, which is one of the most famous game stores in this entire area. It's iconic at this point, and it was really fun being back after all these years. Super Potato. The best name for a game store ever. If you've never been to a Super Potato, especially this one, you definitely have to go, even if you're not gonna buy games because it's multiple floors and as you can see here, it is just jam packed full of games. It's everything that you think of a game store would be in, in Tokyo, you know? However, I do think that the cat is out of the bag when it comes to this place. People know about it, they, they come here, they shop. It felt like it was busier than last time I was here. And they do have a good selection of games, but you are gonna pay a bit of a premium for those games. So just kind of be aware. You know, I felt like the prices were a little high, so I didn't, I didn't end up picking up anything this time. We also visited Beep, which is another store that I loved going to last time. And it was kind of similar to that as well. I went down there and I was like, it, it, it felt again, a little bit more picked over. And Kinsey was like, yeah, it's because people kind of know about this place now. It was fun to look around because Beep has a lot of classic Japanese computers and software, and they're all up and running and working, and that's cool to see. Also, Tony's big thing that he collects is arcade boards, and so he wanted to go there to see what their selection is, and they have a bunch of really cool stuff. I don't know if he picked up anything or not. He might have bought one. But kind of like Super Potato, I felt like Beep was a little underwhelming this time. Like, ah, oh, man. So many people know about it. So I kind of struck out here. However, I made it up by going around the corner to another Surigaya store. And in this place, I found a bunch of stuff. Specifically, their Switch selection was pretty good, I thought. So I actually spent quite a bit of time digging through all those and just kind of wandering the aisles here. So yeah, I, I definitely picked up some cool games here. And so this entire day was us just bouncing around, going from store to store, trying our luck at finding some video games. And a little bit later, actually, I did, I think we went into a trader and I found a bunch of games that I was looking for specifically on the PlayStation Vita. So that was really fun. But that's the thing about Japan is that if you are into video games, oh man, you're just gonna have so much fun here. I mentioned previously that while in Japan, I wanted to find some good ramen, which I did, but you know, it's Japan and they're known for sushi. So of course I wanted to try some conveyor belt sushi as well. Kinsey knew of a good restaurant. And so we were joined by her friend and we went there. And as you see here, it was really fun. If you've never had conveyor belt sushi, you gotta try it. 
The way that this works is instead of having a waiter or a waitress to place your order, you do it all on this touchpad. And essentially you can order whatever you want and then fairly quickly it zips down this conveyor belt and right to your table. And usually these places are pretty reasonably priced. They're not expensive. The way that they work is they basically just count the plates and depending on the restaurant, some plates are worth more than others, but it's really easy to kind of keep track of what you're eating because your, your plates slowly build up and you just try stuff. It's really fun. And not everybody likes raw food. My wife is one of those people who just does not like raw fish and you can still find a lot of things to eat here. And so that's really nice. It, it really is for anybody who's looking for, you know, a quick cheap meal. So anyways, guys, that concludes my trip to Japan, but the videos are not over. I have one more I'm gonna release that's gonna come out in a week, and basically that's gonna be dedicated entirely to all of the Japanese game pickups that I found. And at the end here, I wanna give a huge shout out to Kinsey and Tony, who basically put up with us. <laughs> Sometimes it wasn't probably fun for them because we did complain a little bit about the heat and also just getting lost in Japan. And I tell you what, they were very, very patient with us. And we really appreciate that because that's the one thing when you go to Japan, it can be kind of overwhelming. And just having somebody there who can help you and guide you and sometimes just even order stuff or help you you know, figure out what train to get on is, is just so nice. And so we greatly appreciate it. And I hope that you enjoyed watching this series of videos. They were certainly a lot of fun for me to make. Going to Japan is an amazing experience. And I would say if you have any interest in it, you should definitely go because there's no other place I've ever been to quite like it. It really is a very special place. But anyways, guys, as always, I wanna thank you for watching my channel. Thank you for subscribing and take care.